march of human progress never travels in a straight line, that our work is far from complete, that dangerous currents risk pulling us back into a darker, more disordered world. Today we see the collapse of strong men and fragile states breeding conflict and driving innocent men, women, and children across borders on an epic scale. Brutal networks of terror have stepped into the vacuum. Technologies that empower individuals are now also exploited by those who spread disinformation or suppress dissent or radicalize our youth. Global capital flows have powered growth and investment, but also increased risk of contagion, weakened the bargaining power of workers, and accelerated inequality. How should we respond to these trends? There are those who argue that the ideals enshrined in the UN Charter are unachievable or out of date, a legacy of a post-war era not suited to our own. Effectively, they argue for a return to the rules that applied for most of human history and that predate this institution, the belief that power is a zero-sum game, that might makes right, that strong states must impose their will on weaker ones, that the rights of individuals don't matter, and that in a time of rapid change, order must be imposed by force. On this basis, we see some major powers assert themselves in ways that contravene international law. We see an erosion of the democratic principles and human rights that are fundamental to this institution's mission. Information is strictly controlled, the space for civil society restricted. We're told that such retrenchment is required to beat back disorder that it's the only way to stamp out terrorism or prevent foreign meddling. In accordance with this logic, we should support tyrants like Bashar al-Assad, who drops barrel bombs to massacre innocent children, because the alternative is surely worse. The increasing skepticism of our international order can also be found in the most advanced democracies. We see greater polarization, more frequent gridlock, movements on the far right and sometimes the left that insist on stopping the trade that binds our fates to other nations, calling for the building of walls to keep out immigrants. And most ominously, we see the fears of ordinary people being exploited through appeals to sectarianism or tribalism, or racism, or anti-Semitism, appeals to a glorious past before the body politic was infected by those who look different or worship God differently, a politics of us versus them. The United States is not immune from this. 